Hey everyone, welcome to this video where I will show you the most basic way of creating a robot program in the robots plugin. In the last video, we installed the plugin. So if um, you haven't done that already, please go back to the other video and first install the plugin. And then you should have this tab up here that has all of the components that we can use for robot programming. We will be using the UR10 from KU Leuven. But of course, this works very similar with any other kind of robot. So even if you have a different robot, you should be able to follow along. The robots plugin works by using planes and most robot plugins do this because we don't just want to have a coordinate in space. We also want a direction with which the robot actually uh, accesses this point in space. So how do we actually uh, create something like this? Um, the way I will start is to simply in Grasshopper create a point. And this point should be in 500, 500, 500. And in this way, we create a point that is also represented in our Rhino interface. And we can even then drag it uh, to a different spot. And from this point, I want to create a plane because just as I said, we don't just need the point itself. We also need a direction from which the robot actually uh, accesses this point and uh, kind of the orientation, the tool that we have attached to the robot actually comes to this point. So what we need to do from this point is to actually then create a plane and we do this under vector plane. And for now, we will just use an XZ plane. Nope, we will use an XY plane, of course, which is basically just the horizontal plane um, in Rhino. We can then add this point as the origin to our XY plane. And here we see this is our graphical representation of the plane. In order to um, see this a bit more clearly, I will uh, make the planes display just a bit bigger. You don't need to do that, of course. So now we have this plane and we want our robot to actually go to this position. How do we do that? This is where the robot plugin comes in. Um, under components, we will create a target. Coordinates or what we also call waypoints in the robot pendant is called a target in the um, robots plugin. And here you can also see or you can already see that it takes a target plane as the input and then creates this robot target as the output. So I will simply put it there. There are no errors. So this is what was expected by the component. So the next thing that I will do is to actually use this target now to create a robot program. And so we will use the create program um, component that we will put right here. We will check the different um, inputs that we have. Uh, we have, we can give it a name. We have the robot system. We have uh, different targets, target one, which is if we're using two robots, we can actually do, uh, put uh, targets for the two robots into, um, into these respective uh, inputs. We have init commands that I will not explain in this video, but in a future video. Multifile indices, which is also kind of an advanced thing that you won't need very often and the step size. But what we need right now is only the robot system, which we have loaded right here. If you haven't seen the previous video, you can do that under load robot system, put it into here. And then we want the target going into targets one. All right, not much has uh, changed. The, the balloon says we have warnings in the program. And so what we want to do is to actually figure out, okay, what are the warnings in the program? I will get a panel. We get this under params panel and put the warnings into this uh, panel. We see that there are a few warnings. First target in robot zero changed to a joint motion using axis rotations. One targets have their tool set to default, the first one being target zero. One targets have their speed set to default. These warnings are perfectly fine. Um, these are just uh, 
basically notes to us to say, hey, there might be stuff that is not defined, um, but for now, this doesn't need to concern us. These are perfectly fine. The um, problems come up when we actually have errors. And as you can see, the errors um, are currently empty, so we don't have any um, actual problems that would prevent us from creating this robot program. So we have now taken this uh, point, created a plane out of it, made this plane into a target that we can then use to create the program. However, we don't see anything yet in our uh, Rhino canvas. In order to have this, we will go back to the components and set, uh, select the program simulation component that you can also see under the robots tab under components program simulation. And here we simply put in the program and there we can actually see the way the robot uh, moves to our coordinate. And just to make this a bit more um, or a bit less cluttered, I will uh, stop the preview of the robot system and simply have the preview of the, uh, of the robot simulation. So we also have different inputs like time and normalized into our program simulation. We don't need this right now since we only have one robot target. So we don't need to, we don't have uh, different targets that we can then kind of uh, uh, play the motion between. Right now we only have one target, but um, there's not much happening right now. So now if you've ever used these robots, you know that we don't just put in a waypoint. We have many, many other parameters that we can set in the robot to actually um, create our program. And this is one thing that is not the most intuitive, uh, not, not done in the most intuitive way in this plugin, but we have to right click on our create target component and we can then add more inputs. For example, the configuration input that I will show you just in a minute, as well as the motion input. And we also have stuff like tool input, the speed input, and a few others that we will not go into um, in this video, but that we will um, look at in a future video. So the first thing that we can um, uh, look at is the configuration. So as you see, the robot right now goes to this point in this, um, in this kind of, in this way. However, a six axis robot usually has more than one way to reach any point. And this is what the configuration basically defines. So we could, for example, say, I don't want the elbow to be up, I want the elbow to be down, or I want to, um, the robot to approach the, the point from, or have the wrist basically on the other side. And so we can uh, configure our robot and set the way the uh, robot joints are rotated in order for, for it to, um, to have, or to, to happen, in it, the robot to move in such a way that we actually want it to happen. Next thing that you will have noticed is that the robot approaches this point or this plane that we have defined from below. Um, this might be the case. It might be that we actually want to, to do it that way. However, most of the time you might want to access a point from above. And in order to change this, we basically just have to flip the plane. So this is not something that happens on the uh, robot program side, but before by um, editing the plane that actually is used to create the target. I will do this under vector and then plane flip plane here. And you can already see the robot uh, switched around and now uh, approaches this point from uh, the other direction. Um, there are, of course, uh, different ways we can, we can flip this plane. Um, I will not go over this here, but uh, you can uh, simply add a toggle, for example, to the, different, to the different inputs and check out how the plane um, is, is uh, flipped depending on which axes are reversed. So, in order um, 
for us to have more than just one waypoint. Of course, we need um, uh, we need more than one point and also more than one plane that comes into the create target. In this video, I will keep it basic and just do this three times. Um, of course, usually this would not be the way you would do it in Grasshopper, but I will just uh, copy and paste it right here. And I will then also use a merge component. It is very, very um, advisable to actually use a merge component if we're using different kinds of input. Um, you can, of course, in Grasshopper, hit, simply hit the Shift key and add multiple points to, uh, into one input that way. However, if you're working with a robot, it's very important that you know the, uh, the order these inputs come in and that it's also much easier to maybe remove one of these inputs. So it's always advisable to actually use a merge component that can then be used to, uh, to actually have this plane. Now, these three points are all in the same uh, position. So in order for us to have an actual uh, interesting motion, I will put them like this. And now we can actually hit the playback uh, button that is here in the bottom of the simulation component. And we will then actually see how the robot moves through these three points. If we then want to basically have a bit more control over how uh, to see where the robot goes, we can use a number slider that we simply put into the time input. And then we can use this number slider to basically iterate through all of our positions. So this is the most basic way to control a robot with the robots plugin. I will quickly recap this right here, maybe clean it up a bit, add some, add some groups right here. And I will also put the preview for the meshes, custom preview, system meshes, in such a way that uh, we don't need to actually have all of these. Interesting, one of the meshes is not being displayed, which is weird. All right, let me uncheck this for now. All right. Shouldn't be that. Uh, would be nice to, to have a bit more control how this is displayed, but uh, shouldn't bother us for now. So quick recap. We have created points, um, points in space, which were then converted or used as the origin for an XY plane that then gives us the direction from which the robot um, accesses this plane. We have then flipped the plane in order for the robot to actually come at this plane from the, from the right direction. We have used these three points and these three corresponding planes um, as or created one list out of them with a merge component. Here you can see the three planes. And we have then used these three planes as the input for a create target component that is then used to put into a create program component. And from there, we can simulate the actual uh, program and actually see how the robot moves through these waypoints. That should be it for this very basic tutorial. In the next tutorial, I will show you um, how you can actually upload this program to your robot.